We've come to the end of our series in rational numbers. We have investigated fractions. We have looked at integers and decimals. Now we're going to analyze and investigate how to put these numbers in order. Now keep in mind we can only compare decimals with other decimals. Likewise, we can compare fractions with other fractions, keeping also in mind that those fractions have to have the same denominator. The bases, the bottom, the denominator has to be the same when you compare two fractions. However, if we see scenarios like this where we have decimals and fractions in the same question, we have to find a way to change them both into decimals or both into fractions and then compare them that way. Now, we, we're going to be using the assistance of a calculator in case we might need one. This is the only time I'm going to be considering the use of it. I doubt we will really need it in any of these cases, but in case we do, it is available for our use. Which is larger, this number or that number? If you get decimal numbers, you can just stack them on top of each other and then compare. Let's see how that works. Let me make this one a little bigger so that it stacks perfectly. Line up the decimals and then compare that way. Start on this end. They're both ones. It's tied. They're both sixes. Let's keep moving. They're both twos. So far, it's a dead tie. Fours. This is a one. This is a two. Ha ha. This is bigger. The bottom one's bigger. So we'll put it back over here and we will allow the mouth to eat the bigger number. We will point the mouth this way. Imagine the teeth on this side and the teeth and he's going to chomp this number because it's bigger. Moving on to the second question, we have another decimal versus decimal. We're going to put these on top of each other and we will analyze them once again. We have zeros here. We don't start on this side. We start on this side. These are the holes which take first priority and then the tenths take second priority and then the hundredths and so on. So zeros are tied. Twos are tied. And then we have zero. Zero again. Zero versus zero. It's tied. Zero versus zero. Zero versus one. This is the winner right here. So we'll put them back and nothing different. We have our mouth opening to this side. I'll put some fake teeth on him, maybe a grill, and he is the winner. Now we have a situation where we have a decimal versus a fraction. By the way, I hope you're writing all this down and taking notes or at least trying it along with me. That's the best way to learn this sort of thing. We have decimal 27 versus 2 over 6. The easiest way would be to convert them both into decimals. I don't like converting everything into a fraction. If I see a, a, at least one or two decimals, I'm going to do my best to convert everything into a decimal because the problem with turning this into a fraction is you're going to get 27 out of 100, which is easy enough to write. However, comparing fractions requires you to have the same denominator, which means you have to turn that 6 into 100. How are you supposed to do that? 6 times what is a? You see what I mean? So instead of doing that, let's get rid of this and turn this one into a decimal. That's very simple for those of you who have paid attention in grade 7 math because 2 over 6 is 1 over 3 and 1 over 3 is decimal 3 repeating. That's right. That's one of the things you should have memorized back in grade 7. If you didn't, just take your calculator, go 2 divided by 6 in that order, 2 divided by 6, and you can see it's confirmed that it is decimal 33333. Three, 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 three. It looks like the calculator stops it right here, but what's really happening is the calculator has run out of, out of space, so it just it has to end it. But it does continue forever. Which is larger? Well, now we can take this number, we can stack it on top of this one, lining up those decimal values. Then we have 0 versus 0, and then 3 versus 2. So we have a winner. It is 2 over 6, because here's the decimal form, and it automatically wins. So we'll, we will put the mouth again facing this way. Moving on to this question. Here we have a decimal versus a fraction. And like I said, it is best to turn them both to decimals. So what is the decimal version of this? Again, if you've paid attention in grade 7 math, then you would know right away that this is negative 3. And 4 over 9, we need to put a decimal because the fraction is coming up. We have the holes over here and then the decimals next because of the fraction. Anything over 9 
is that number repeating? So if it's four over nine, it's decimal four, 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 four. If it's des, if it's, if it's six over nine, it'll be decimal six repeating. Here we have a four, so it's going to be four forever. Now we will take this. Now look, if you didn't know that, all you have to do is that is take your calculator. You don't have to punch in the negative three. You all, because that's obvious. It's just negative three holes. You just have to punch four over nine. So you go four divided by nine. And you push the equal button and you get decimal four, 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 four. So that means it is negative three, decimal four, four, four repeating. Now you stack them on top of each other, lining up the decimal values. But there's a trick to this. It's not quite simple. See, take a look at this. We have threes over here, and then a decimal. So, so far it's a tie, but then we have the four versus three, and it's very easy to say this is the winner, but not so fast because we're on the negative side. And if you don't remember what the negative side looks like, here's zero, here's negative one, negative two, negative three, now I'm going to stretch this out. Negative four, negative 3.3 is going to be right here. Let's change its color. We have negative 3.3 and then negative 3.4 will be further down. Remember how negative numbers work? As you move to the left, those numbers seem to be getting bigger. The, the numbers keep growing. So 3.4 would actually be less than 3.3 because 3.3 is a little bit closer to zero. So it wins. Negatives can be tricky. Be very, very cautious with them. So what's the bigger number? It's negative 3.3 because look at it. It's right here. It's closer to the zero, which is the larger side. So what we will do is again, the mouth opens this way and we don't like red mouths. We like the monster mouth to be yellow. So we'll do that. Now we'll move on down here. Same idea with the negatives. So we have two fractions now, which is great because we like to compare two fractions if they have the same denominator. Now this is mixed and this is improper. So we need to turn them both either mixed or both improper. I prefer both of them to be improper. That's my recommendation. I'm not saying it's the best way to do it. It's the best way to do it. So here we have now negative one times 10 makes negative don't don't consider the negative just ignore the negative go 10 times 1 plus 2 makes 12 so we're going to write net well, what are we writing here we're going to be writing 12 let's write 12 over 10 i'm going to squeeze it on the page we have 12 over 10 and negative 30 over 10 not really this is negative 30 over 5 we need to times this by 2 times that by two, and now we've got negative 60 over 10 versus 12 over 10, put the negative here. Which one is larger? Is negative 12 larger or is negative 60 larger? Because the denominators are the same, so we can ignore them now. Look at the tops, which is bigger? What's larger? Negative 60, right? No, nope. don't get tricked by this. Negative 60 is all the way on this side. Negative 60 is, here's negative four. Negative 60 is way down there. It's out of sight. It's so small that it's not even going to fit on the page. Negative 12, however, is closer to zero, so it wins. This is the larger number. So the mouth now for once will face this way. Put those teeth on them. Nom, nom, nom. Now we have the last question. Again, we have two fractions. Make them both improper. That's the best way to do it. Seven times, now look, we don't even have to do anything here because this is a positive and this is a negative. Positive is going to automatically be bigger. But let's change it a little bit. Let's make this a negative. Now it's negative one and three sevenths. Let's do this now. We have seven times one plus three is ten. We have ten over seven. And this here is twenty over fourteen. I'm going to leave it that way. Negative twenty over fourteen. I can take this here. It's a negative. We're going to times this by two times that by two, we're going to turn this into 20, negative 20 over 14. When you double both numbers, you get that fraction. They're equivalent. They're the same thing. Which one is bigger? Look at it. Do you see it? The denominators match. Look at the numerators. They're both negative 20. They're equal. We'll put an equal sign. 